It is indeed with great pleasure that I welcome the President of our party here today. She's only held the position since February, but I have to say she has made a tremendous impact in that time. She fulfills her roles with eloquence and efficiency, and I've yet to meet anyone who is not impressed by her ability and intelligence, and I'm not just referring to Sinn Féin voters in that. So please give a huge welcome to Uttaran Sinn Féin, Mary Lou Macdonald. I can hardly match uh, the welcome that Pauline has extended to you uh, to this beautiful county of Cavan and to this beautiful hotel. And I want to acknowledge Ross, the owner of the hotel, and to thank him for his welcome. But I can say firstly, in as solemn a tone as I can muster, to Tyrone, Covron, Begloa Ella Aun, and to the dubs, we did it. And rumours or concern about a split in the leadership of Sinn Féin are much exaggerated. Michelle always knew there could only be one outcome. We haven't fallen out on it, nor would we, because this is uniquely an All-Ireland party, an All-Ireland movement, the only party with representatives in the Oireachtas, the Assembly with people elected to Westminster seats, to the European Parliament and to councils the length and breadth of Ireland. And the next two days are important for us to strategise and to plan, and we have a lot to discuss. This is my first away day as Uchtaran Hinn Féin. And for me, it's an honour to be here and to lead the discussion at this decisive period for the party and for Ireland. Since my election as Uchtaran, I've started a journey across Ireland. I've met with many groups and I've listened. I've met with business groups, with chambers of commerce, with women's groups. I've visited domestic violence shelters, childcare providers and schools. I've sat with community and youth groups and I've witnessed at first hand the invaluable work that they do to support people with mental health issues. And common to all of these people that I've met is working hard and wanting a better Ireland for their families and for their communities, wanting a better Ireland and a fairer Ireland. They are tenants wanting security of tenure and certainty of affordable rent. They are the homeless waiting for a roof over their heads. They are the young couples who dream of owning their own home. I've sat with mothers struggling with back to school costs and working to meet the price of childcare. I've listened to parents glowing with pride as their child gets a place at university only to find that they'll have no accommodation. I've met with carers, people with disabilities and their families who are undervalued and abandoned by the state and who have to fight to secure the most basic of services. I've met people in border communities like this who are now looking beyond Brexit and towards a united Ireland. Our young people, our LGBT plus citizens, our new citizens and our older citizens want respect their rights recognised and their place in our nation secured. And it's their experiences and reality that inform and drive our work. We are determined to act on their behalf, to give voice to those who have been silenced or ignored. And all of them, and all of us, want a better future, expect a better Ireland and won't accept anything less. And they and we must define the new Ireland that is emerging. A new Ireland, a united Ireland that works for its citizens, that's home for all. This new Ireland will not be built by Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael. It will be a new and united Ireland shaped by our people 
and built on the principles of equality and respect. A united Ireland of shared prosperity and equal opportunity. A new Ireland for everybody that shares this island. And delivering that new Ireland is the, mess, the mission statement for our generation of Republicans. It is a task that's bigger than Sinn Féin, but it's one that nonetheless must be driven by Sinn Féin. So the question for us is, how do we go about this task? In the coming term, we'll face many challenges. We'll also face great opportunities. And our work starts now. So we must robustly challenge the marginalisation and neglect of rural Ireland. Rural communities like this one in Cavan have been abandoned by successive Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil governments. And their latest attack is to close 159 post offices in some of the most rural and isolated communities in the state. This must be challenged and this must be stopped. So as a matter of priority, on the week the Dáil returns, Sinn Féin will table a motion to save these vital rural services, to save our post offices. And I challenge Micheál Martin, I challenge Fianna Fáil to stand up for rural Ireland. I challenge him and them to get off the fence and to support our motion. Begrún Hinn Féin kunna sérvi si ríhávag tukshá a hávál as corna dála i gá hjáctan. Érum er Mihal Martin agus Fianna Fáil takú leis an rúin sin mar tá siad dá ríra fwi ifigí an fwisht. Friends, the upcoming budget will allow us to demonstrate the difference that Sinn Féin can make in government. Unlike other parties who produce wish lists, Sinn Féin will bring forward a fully costed alternative budget. We will lay out what could be done, what should be done, in the best interests of our people, our economy and our services. We will show how a Sinn Féin finance minister would generate and share prosperity. A Sinn Féin budget and a Sinn Féin government would tackle the cost of living, would ensure a fair day's wage for a fair day's work, would create and share prosperity in the interests of all. Health, homes, schools and security are to the benefit of citizens and business alike and Sinn Féin above all would make the difference in housing. The policy of this government is failing the homeless, failing those that rent, failing those who strive to own a home. We now have a generation of workers who will never afford to own a home. We have a minister who is failing and who is out of touch. We have 10,000 people homeless. That's the population of Longford Town. Homeless, on his watch, and things are getting worse. This is a national crisis, this is a scandal, and it's time to call a halt, and it's time for Minister Owen Murphy to go. <laughs> Neil Bartish on real tish eg uber, ta ara agwing will os chowl, to demil dini agwing gan di don agus to rodi egarinis massa is gyar came na shunta esha is skanal esha to she in aum stad a kurlesh to she in aum don ara dol so we will table a motion of no confidence in Minister Murphy in the coming weeks. And then it will be decision time. It will be decision time for the government and decision time for Fianna Fáil. Does the government, does Fianna Fáil stand over the minister and his appalling record? Or do they stand with us and say it's time to go? Do they stand with the people or not? That's the decision they must take. Because a new Ireland is not worthy of the name 
if it's a place of inequality, of homelessness and hardship. It's not worthy of the name if it offers opportunity for the few and crumbs for the rest. It has to be a place that we all call home. A place where women can trust the HSE. A place where the state does not drag dying women through the courts. A place where women's health is respected and safeguarded. A place where families of children with autism are supported. A place where every child, including those with autism, have a school place. This is the Ireland that we can and we must build. In February, the talks in the North collapsed when the DUP leadership walked away from the deal that they had agreed. And the issues that led to the collapse of the talks have not gone away, nor will they go away. This is not a dispute between two parties. It's much bigger than two parties. It's about the rights and respect due to all in society. It's, it's between those who are for equality and respect and those who are not. And these issues, as we know, cut across all sections of the community because rights and respect are not orange or green issues. The rights afforded to citizens in the rest of Ireland and in Britain should be recognised in the North. The right to marriage equality, to health care for women, to the protections of a language act and to access to inquest. Bacart na cearta a hugtars de Saeronig sa quid gelidin tír agus sa vratin a ahint sa tuiscart. An cearta cun co onanas posa Coram Slainse de Vana August Geneve Changa. So the, the solution to the impasse is actually very clear. Implement existing agreements, end the denial of rights, and enter into real power sharing partnership. The do nothing British government that have supported the undermining of their own agreements and the rights uh, of citizens stand idly by. The two governments have said that they're planning for a further round of talks in the autumn, and of course I welcome that. We are up for talks and agreement, but the talks must be credible. We can't have talks for the sake of talking. This has to be about delivery. If the DUP can't or won't deliver, well then the two governments must make clear their intention to move ahead with the full implementation of the agreements and the extension of rights to the North that are available right across the rest of Ireland. The British Government know the position of the majority of political parties and MLAs on Brexit. The Alliance, the SDLP, the Greens and ourselves. They know what people in the North think of Brexit. They know that they voted to remain and we know that that must be respected. Last December, the Taoiseach told us he had a cast iron guarantee on protecting Ireland. And yet it appears that this guarantee has melted with the snows of last year. So our national interests must be protected. And that means no hard border. It means no border. It means no reduction in rights. And it means safeguarding the Good Friday Agreement in all of its parts. So the Taoiseach must make good on these, and he must make good on his commitment that the North will never again be left behind. He must, for example, ensure that citizens in the North continue to have representation in the European Parliament. And we challenge him today to make good on those commitments. We all know that the North is changing that the perpetual unionist majority is gone and Brexit has demonst demonstrated again the fundamental anti-democratic nature of the union with Britain. And now a new generation is questioning partition and they're looking beyond it and they want to define their place in a new and united Ireland. So it's no longer a case of if there will be a referendum on unity, but a question of when that referendum on unity will take place. We need to secure that referendum, 
We need to ensure that it's conducted in an informed and respectful way, and above all, we must set out to win it. So it's all to play for in the coming term and in the coming years. The actions that we take, the decisions that we make, the alliances that we build will determine the shape of a new united Ireland. So let's look to the opportunities and the challenges and that of course includes the presidential election. Because this is an opportunity for a national conversation about this new Ireland. It's an opportunity to elect a new president for a new Ireland. A president for all of the people, north and south. A president for the Irish nation at home and abroad. Is desha koro no shunta ave aguing fui era nua. Desh kun uktaron nua hogu dera nua. Uktaron de nadini galer, o hui agasoyas. Uktaron de no shun neheran, sawalia agas harlar. Article 3 of Bunrocks Neheran makes it clear and sets it out as follows that it is the firm will of the Irish nation in harmony and friendship to unite all the people who share the territory of the island of Ireland. So this new president must make good that promise to unite our nation in all our diversity and difference. Uktaron a name toi or no shun. Imagine not just a new president in the Oris, but a new kind of presidency. Nominations are open and we will ratify our candidate on the 16th of September next. And we do so because we believe that the people should decide who is president. It's not in the gift of Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael. It's the people's president and there will be a Sinn Féin candidate in the field. So we have a lot of work to do, a lot of decisions to make, a lot of opportunities to take. And what we do today, tomorrow and in the coming term can make a real difference, can make all of this happen. So it's in our hands, it's in your hands, and may the next two days be busy, be thoughtful, and when we leave here, we leave here sure, sure that this is the team, as Pauline said, who will deliver the Republic, see the rising of the moon. These, we, you and I, are the architects, prime architects of a new Ireland. So, Guramila Mahagwiv, Agus Ganairi Liv Galair. Sinn Féin, Gwananis Carta Agus Eintas Naharan, Equality, Rights and Irish Unity.